Look. You can enter your home to north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest. A kind of country lane is visible to the south. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. What do we do next? something I I missed something let's look the game let's see, open we left off look you can, you can. A local standing on the other side of the bulldozer he seems to be wearing a digital watch a noise of a giant bulldozer is now so violently loud that you can't even hear Prosser yell it to warn you that you'll be cured if you don't killed if you don't get the hell out of the way you just um, you just see him just looking widely. Okay. okay, um, no. You sound rather negative. With a terrible grinding of the gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances all over your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, your friend Ford Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, Hello, Arthur. Takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you. Ford, what about my house? It's not a house, it's a home. Footnote 2. Ford glances uncomfortably at the sky. He offers you the towel again. Ford, what about my home? Ford looks startled, then guilty. He starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly, he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time and start, stops starting to, to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision. Says he has something of, of earth-shattering importance to tell you. And stresses the importance of a quick drink at the horse and groom. Pointing toward Prosser, he exclaimed, But that man wants to knock my house down! Ford goes off for a quiet word with Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening although they seem deeply engrossed in conversation. Speak to Ford. Ford Prefect looks at you expectantly as if you were about to talk. Speak. Okay. Let's see what I should do. Stand up. Your your home collapses a. Oh, I died again. A straight brick. Fly. Okay, I should have just stayed lying down. Let's look the game. Restore. Ten out of four hundred and twenty-seven times. Look. No. With a terrible grinding of gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances all over your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, friend Ford Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, hello, Arthur, takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you. All right, we're gonna save their game after we do this. Uh, 
Ford, what about my home? Ford looks startled, then guilty. He starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time. Stops starting to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision. He says he has something of earth-shattering importance to tell you and stresses the importance of a quick drink at the horse in that room. Pointing toward Prosser, you explain, but that man wants to knock my house down. Ford goes off for a quiet word with Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening, although they seem deeply engrossed in, in conversation. All right, we'll save our game as, uh, add a new save, save point called home or house or Arthur's house. Okay, look, front of house lying down. You can enter your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest and a country lane is visible to the south. I am not getting up from that tr that uh, bulldozer until someone stops that bulldozer permanently. Ford Prefect is here. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Ford and Prosser stop talking and approach you. Ford says that Prosser has agreed to lie in your place so that the two of you can go off to the pub. Reluctantly, Prosser steps forward and lies down in front of the bulldozer. You stand up. Go to pub. <laughs> Did you have an, any particular direction in mind? Ford. Ford. Let's go to pub. To the pub. Ford. Go to the pub. Ford, busy scanning the sky for something, ignores you. Look at sky. You see nothing special about the sky. Ford, urging you to follow, hurries toward the country lane. Go. Move. Where do you want to move? Country. Country lane. Country lane. Oh, the, uh. and the country lane is visible to the south. Go south. The country lane. The road runs from your home to the north toward the village pub to the west. Ford Prefect is here. Come along, Arthur, says Ford impatiently, and enters the pub. Enter pub. Pub. The pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they've got about 12 minutes to live and are therefore having a spot of lunch. Some music is playing on the, an old jukebox. The exit, exit is east. Ford Prefect is here. There is a barman sitter serving at the bar. Behind the bar is a shelf. It is full of the sorts of items you find on shelves behind bars and pubs. Ford buys lots of beer and offers half to you. Muscle relaxant, he says impenetrably. Let's save the game as pub. Muscle relaxant, good old beer. That beer does that to you. Uh, drink beer. It's a very good beer, brewed by a small local company. You particularly like its flavor, which is why you woke up feeling so wretched this morning. You were at somebody's birthday party here in the pub last night. You begin to relax and enjoy yourself. So when Ford mentions that he's from a small planet in the vicinity of Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse not from Guildford as he usually claims, you take it in your stride and say, oh yes, which part? Ford. Which part?
Speak to Ford. 